please like, share and subscribe so we can help more fish get better. Thank you. Hi, my name is Dr. Richmond Lowe and I'm the fish vet. In today's video, we're going to be talking about this pond. The owner rang me yesterday letting me know that the fish had a lot of mucus covering them and also they were all just lying flat on the bottom. Now we did a water, a standard water quality analysis and we found that the pH was actually below 5.0 and the owner had subsequently dosed the pond with some sodium bicarbonate otherwise known as baking soda to raise the pH and now it's back at 7 and now you can see that the fish are behaving as they normally should be. And there are some reasons why you can get low pH and some of them is in this particular case it's because they had been breeding and all the reproductive juices like the milk, the ovarian fluid and eggs, the breakdown of those proteins has led to a consumption of the carbonates and a drop in pH. Often when I get cases like this, the owner will be straight away thinking, oh, I've got excess mucus on the body, fish aren't looking well. Some of them might be flashing due to the irritation that the low pH causes them and instantly they think it's going to be a parasitic issue and they might jump ahead and go and treat with various products to treat for external parasites. But that's not going to be the case and it's also fairly dangerous to be tr trying to put medicines into the water, especially when the water is not within the op optimal range, you can get fish deaths. Now, one thing you have to look out for, especially when the pH has dropped to below 5, is that it does damage the organisms or the bacteria in your biofilter. So in those cases, you may get ammonia or nitrite spikes. So for the period, I guess for the next three to four weeks, we want to be monitoring our ammonia and nitrite at least every two days and we also want to reduce the amount that we're feeding your pond fish because we don't want we're going to be treating this like a new tank syndrome or a new pond syndrome where the biofilter is basically sort of starting from scratch so we have to monitor our ammonia and nitrite on an every maybe every day to every two days so there is one fish here that i think from the breeding activity it's not a couple of scales it looks like it's dislodged and possibly has some super, superficial bacterial infection so we're going to address that by removing any infected material and also treating it topically so in terms of what we're going to use for the anesthetic we're going to be using alfaxalone uh, and for the topical antiseptic we're going to use a combination of anaphylaxis which we're going to dilute with some water and also our fish bandage. So I'm just going to add the anesthetic into the water. This net is uh, semi permeable, I guess the solid sides help to hold the water. It's called a koi sock. It helps handlers to be able to transfer fish from one pond to another without damaging it because um, it's got solid sides and the fins aren't going to sort of um, poke out through the, the net holes and you're also able to carry them with a little bit of water so that they maintain moisture on the skin and gills at all times. So we'll just wait for the fish or for the anesthetic to take effect. I just gave it a little pinch test on the on the fins. It's not reacting to that so I know that it's suitably anesthetized for this procedure. Okay, so here's our fish. You can see uh, just around the shoulder area here. Oops, I think I'm blocking the light. You can see actually there's some ulcers forming there and there. What we'll need to do there is actually to remove uh, all the scales that are associated with the ulcer, which would probably be about four for each of the ulcers. Uh, clean it up, put some topical, and I would give it an injection of antibiotics as well because it, it does look quite um, like the beginnings of something that can get quite nasty. That's the sort of like the dead scale there. You can see the skin is completely gone. 
only the bony part of the scale um, is remains and because it's like a bone type material it's not going to heal all that well because uh, it's going to be hard for blood supply to get in to it so you can see all around here uh, that's where we just plucked our first scale off but we need to remove these scales as well So just using a rat's tooth forceps, it gives you a good grip of the scale. And if you have a look in here, we sort of lift up the, the scale on in the front of it, you can see that's actually a pocket uh, underneath here. So that's where bacteria can get in. And if we don't remove the scales properly and clean up that wound, bacteria is just gonna start invading under there be protected from any attempts at repair which can lead to more severe ulceration and septicemia and and death of the fish the other thing with uh, having sick fish in in the pond is that it can um, so promote the growth of more harmful bacteria uh, or increase numbers of them so we really need to get these things looked at quite early on so now we've removed all the affected scales and sort of cleaned up the wound a bit um, this is the ideal time to take a bacterial swab because the swab that we want to sample from of is of the leading edge of the ulcer that gives you where the, the bacteria is actively proliferating rather than the dead damaged things where environmental contaminants might grow over so we'll put our swab into a sleeve it contains the amy's charcoal transport media uh, this is what i use for aquatic bacteria sampling now that we've taken our swab we're going to clean up the wound a little bit more we're going to remove uh, tags of skin with our scissors here because as i mentioned earlier there are pockets that the bacteria could be traveling in through and under so we're going to remove any places where the bacteria can sort of hide underneath we're also going to use the fish bandage which is this white powder which we can can absorb the topical medication that we're applying in this case we're using dilute enrofluxacin injectable we're spraying on topically the combination of these two products will mean that the antibacterial will stay on the fish skin for a much longer amount of time preventing secondary bacteria from setting in now whenever we revive our patients from anesthesia we maintain them or hold them in a controlled manner in this case in the net in the aerated position of the water this allows them to have a lot of oxygenation to the gills and good recovery we don't want to release them prematurely while they're disoriented and they could bump themselves and hurt themselves the bit i always find most interesting is when we revive our fish from an anesthetic or some other procedure uh, it's always interesting to see which fish actually come up to the fish, our patient, and check them out. Uh, sometimes they actually push the fish along to help them sort of get uh, revived a lot quicker. Uh, some individuals actually <laughs> take off and spend as little time as they can uh, near that fish because they don't want to be the next one caught. Uh, but very, very often, uh, with, especially with koi and goldfish, you'll notice that there are some of their mates or their friends will, will come really close, uh, inspect them, give them a nudge and get them going on, on their way. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to get updates of our future videos.